welcome to Artistic Expressions with me, your host, Michelle Thomas. Uh, for today's episode, we have a returning guest. You will uh, remember, Mixer Sean Razi. Um, so today he's going to uh, bring some new information to the table. Um, he has some added information as far as his music. He's going to play for us. And we're going to have a candid conversation about the things on his mind. So enjoy the show and thank you for tuning in. Hold your head as high as you can, high enough to see who you are, little man. Life sometimes is cold and cruel, maybe no one else will tell you, so remember that you are black gold, black gold. Welcome back to Artistic Expressions with me, your host Michelle Thomas, and with me I have Mixa Sean Rossi. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> Wonderful. Thank yeah. you for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. Again, again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, today I want to talk about uh, time. Time. And, uh, yeah, because time is my business, being okay. a musician. Yes. And, you know, time, this, time is so misunderstood. And, you know, just being who I am, I'm misunderstood on all kinds of levels. I love it, yes. You yes. know, like being indigenous or first an Indian. Yeah. And, you know, and of course the, the age old question of race, which we're so involved in right now. Right, yes. You know, <laughs> identity crisis people have. So I'm going to try to clear up, clear up a little bit about okay. just uh, our conception of time okay. and where we're at. And then I'll play a little bit of music. But before I do that, yes. let me just say that. Um, Lately, I've been really doing a retrospect on uh, not just on time, right. like to, to how I perceive things, but also my music. Okay. So, at this point, I like to uh, do what I call. I'd like to think of myself as a terrissimo metaphysical, okay. the metaphysical tourist, okay. and that's what you do when you play music. Because when you play music, not only is it in the current time. But you're going back in time. The actual music is the, the, the original time travel. Mm -hmm. You make me think of right. transcendence. <laughs> it is. It is because I mean, if you think about it, if anybody has a favorite song, if you think about you know your favorite song, the first time you heard it, you go right back to where to you were. To that moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But people are so hung up on the material. So right. because we're hung up on the material, I want to have some material data so we can. Yes. Talk about that. Yes, yes, so yes. the first thing uh, I like to talk about is um, where we're at, and then, of course that's Quantucket, Connecticut, also that's Connecticut. And people are so they have such a misunderstanding about how how things have evolved here, right. because here in Connecticut, it's not like you know when the colonists came here suddenly it just became a vibrant place. It was always a vibrant place. And I, I'm going to refer a little sure, bit to sure, my sure. notes, but um, I'm going to just talk a little bit about the um, indigenous roots of social activism and revolution. Mm -hmm. Because social activism, when you talk about native culture, people don't necessarily uh, associate it with uh, social activism. Right, when you said revolution. that to me, I was like, yeah, I, didn't, I wouldn't put those two together. Yeah, Initially. no, normally people don't, but it's like, think of it, I guess the easiest way to think of it is, we all know what science fiction is. Right. You know, people like to write, gee, what will happen in the mm -hmm. future? <laughs> well, indigenous people, not just native people here, but around the planet, right. indigenous people have seen science fiction played out, you know, through their lives, going from one understanding to another, because when we use that term American, for instance, right. it's always misunderstood what American is, like most people think of Americans in the old tradition, not even, I wouldn't say old traditional, but in the modern way of, actually a very racist way. Mm -hmm. They think of just white American, North Americans right. in the United States, right. when the fact is American, that America, that refers to the entire hemisphere, mm -hmm. and all the peoples that are in it, the indigenous people and the people who've come and, and created this culture that we live in. Right. So. You know, there's so many misunderstandings about that. I think I'd like to just start right here in Connecticut right. because we always look at it coming from uh, a colonial perspective. 
And that's another another um, aspect of time that we don't really talk about, mm -hmm. but it's very important because when you're talking about history and time, if you're going to go back to the history of Connecticut and you only start at the colonial times, then you go, that's one aspect slice, of time that... Slice. Yeah, one slice. There's a lot going on. Oh, <laughs> lots. Colonists got here. Right, and even now, the scientists, mm -hmm. the modern scientists, when they talk about, you know, before colonial right. period, they only talk about, you know, the, the Ice Age and, you know, what happened 25,000 right. years ago. Right. While that's important, that's not really going to tell us how we came to about now. Mm -hmm. Because even things that we were going through changes 10, 12,000 years ago, the Ice Age receding and all of that mm -hmm. stuff, there are geological features that are here that have affected us and still perfect, mm -hmm. affect us profoundly. Mm -hmm. Like, um, well, let me get back to what I, sure. I started with the uh, indigenous roots of uh, social yeah. activism yeah. and, mm -hmm. and uh, revolution. A lot of that is connected to two things, geography mm -hmm. and technology. Okay. And that's one, two things in Connecticut or anywhere, especially in Connecticut, that you have to understand, because this is a very small area. And when I say Connecticut, or Quantucket, the, mm -hmm. the long tidal river land, we have to understand what we're talking about first. Like, I'll refer to the notes Sorry. here. Like, in understanding the perspective, the area that we call Connecticut, it's not neatly confined to what you see on the map. When they say Connecticut, you look at a little map. Right, 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 right. And that's not really an accurate map because Connecticut and the influences both from Connecticut and around us mm -hmm. are so massive and widespread that looking at that little piece of the map is like looking at, you know, Venus de Milo, you know, the picture right. of no arms right. and no voice to speak Very to. Very nice. Mm -hmm. so, when you talk about Connecticut, you're actually talking about uh, present day Long Island, which is New York, mm -hmm. and you're talking about uh, Connecticut River, which goes through New Hampshire up to Canada, right. and you know you're talking about even down below Long Island, like into New Jersey. Right. Those areas and all going up into Canada and really far beyond that are very important for us to understand what Connecticut, what our role has, is and how it's always been a central point of technology and innovation. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about how there's two things that we want to talk about when we're talking about Connecticut that people mm -hmm. often misunderstand. And those two things are geography and technology. Now, number one, the geography is that vast connected water system, which is both oceanic and fresh, meaning that, you know, mm -hmm. it, yeah, they go, the rivers go into, far into the interior, mm -hmm. because the influence of native people and uh, native people on us goes far beyond these borders. You make me, it makes me think of, you know, when you say that, because the indigenous people, they were people, and so, it, it's it's as if you know that's a living and breathing and they were doing and so they there was a vast amount of land that was covered and then you know you say colonial times coming in that's who's really like marking you know like yes. drawing the line in the sand and saying yes. this is Connecticut well that's not realistic from what you're talking about because you know when you have the people who are traveling along the river and and having homes, this is very spread and that influence is going to... Well, that's what, I'll give you an example, like, for instance, um, the way historians, often modern historians look right. at, at things, they say that, you know, the people of Connecticut were separated to the small, you know, different tribes, mm -hmm. and yeah, there are definitely territories that, you know, people held, right. but we all spoke the same language, mm -hmm. we all were interconnected. I mean, to give you one example of how confusing this is. Um, take Pequot and Mohican nations. Right. Now, when we speak of the Pequot and Mohican nations, first of all, we know, not many people know, some people know, there are actually two Pequot nations mm -hmm. presently, you know, the Eastern and the Western Pequot and Mohican nation, of course, everyone knows. But what's interesting, the founder of 
the so-called Mohican nation, Uncas, mm -hmm. was actually a Pequot. Okay. And his father-in-law was <laughs> Susacus, who was the sachem, not the chief, but we say sachem, mm -hmm. who opposed the English. And during the conflict between the English and the Pequots, there was um, Uncas actually, you know, being the brother-in-law mm -hmm. to uh, son-in-law to, to Susacus, murdered his own uh, father-in-law and presented his head to the English. Oh, wow. Okay. So, I mean, we really have to understand the, when we talk about colonial times, it's a very painful period. Yeah, know, sure. The way that, because I mean, I, I work in the public school systems Multiple and I see, levels, yeah. yeah, and I see how his, that's why I'm, I'm taking the time to do this because right. history is so layered with so, so many missed half truths. I won't even say lies, I'll just say half truths okay. that are that's twisted. Yeah, they're twisted to, mm -hmm. to follow this this uh, well, colonial dialogue. Right, it's to, mm -hmm, it's to move the minds to for a certain agenda and a for a certain mind frame. Right. Yes, and it has been <laughs> working for a hundred years. Well, I mean, speaking of that, I you know, and I, I take this time because it really upsets me, especially since I'm a, you know, right. I work <laughs> You know, <laughs> our vacation, of one of our holidays has been taken away. And of course, that was for Columbus, which it has another person, you know, in right, deep right, controversy. Right, right, right. Sure. You know, um, the fact that we we're celebrating a man, a man who got lost and was actually a, today what the actions he did would actually be considered, you know, sure. crimes against humanity. Right. You know, but so now that they don't honor Columbus on Columbus Day, they took the holiday away completely. Right. Which is, I mean. This is more an example of, of why we really have to look at history. It's extremely important. Now getting back to Connecticut and the history, I'll give you another example of how widespread our influence is. Mm -hmm. There is the, uh, the so-called Ojibwe people, okay. uh, Anishinaabe, is the traditional way you say it. Now, in the present time, the, the Ojibwe people live in what's now Wisconsin and Minnesota and okay. Canada, mm -hmm. you know, that's like the main uh, body of it. But about five or six hundred, no, five or six hundred years ago, the Ojibwe lived right here. Okay. That's why I even today, people who are studying mm -hmm. like uh, the, and, and when I say studying Algonquin language, right. like the Ojibwe are the Algonquin speaking people. Okay. Most of the, the uh, majority of people who were indigenous people who lived in North America spoke Algonquin. It's true from the East Coast to their, their pockets of Algonquin speaking people all to the West Coast. And Algonquin uh, based languages that go all the way down to the Caribbean and reach into South America. And one of the reasons this is, is getting back to what I was saying about geography and technology. And the technology part of it that people don't understand sure. is I'll use a word that uh, comes from my uh, Wampanoag brothers, but uh, and sisters, which is mashun, mm -hmm. which is another word for saying canoe. Now, understanding, well, as I said, technology and geography, the geography, most of us, if, if right, we're not committed, we can... connected to geography. When you say, when you're talking history and you bring up the term technology, you know, we're 2015, and so the word technology has an entirely different meaning yes. now. And so you say technology, yes. and the, immediately right. the mind goes to some electronic or some yes. higher form, exactly. as opposed to some Te primary the technologies, and, original right. technologies. Because human beings, we're technological by nature. Mm -hmm. Without technologies and dogs, we wouldn't be any. <laughs> No, it's it's true. Those 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 two factors are extremely important. So getting to the technology, canoe is like basic technology, yeah. and it's one of the original time machines because time and space is a canoe is still used for time and space traveling through time and space. Whereas, for instance, in um, when the colonists came here, mm -hmm. the technology they used is not used anymore. Mm -hmm. But canoe technology, right. uh, the technology of building wigwams, it's that. still used. Right. You know, it might use different materials, sure. but it's still used, and people are ignorant of this. Sure. And it's very important to, to regain that knowledge, not just for the descendants of indigenous people, but for everyone. Because 
these technologies allowed people to exist for thousands of years without all the, the pollution problems that right. we have today. Yeah. So getting back to that understanding, the canoe and, and, and how we were able to have Algonquin based languages spread across North America, yeah. they were spread by the canoe. And people had connections that, that, that they would, and relationships that they would build with each other. Like uh, as it said, for instance, the Ojibwe people. You know, when I lived in Minnesota, yeah. I was taking a ride to, to the airport in a cab, I was talking to the cab driver. And it was funny, because you know, we started talking and he says, Oh yeah, I love the water, I love canoe, and uh, I lived on Pequot Lake. I said, Pequot Lake? He says, yeah. I said, in Minnesota? He says, yeah, Pequot Lake. I said, oh, well, that's interesting. I didn't know there was a Pequot Lake. He says, yeah. And when I was a kid, they always taught us that it was right. named by the Pequot people. Right. Now, if you just looked at history the way that's taught now, especially Native history, yeah. you know, they, they weren't taught that there's a connection between no, the Ojibwe. Yeah, and, and that's a very important connection. Yeah. And those relationships, now there's a positive connection between the Algonquin speaking of people of Connecticut and uh, the, the Ojibwe people in the Midwest. It's, it's a very good connection that has always, for centuries, you know, it's been a lot of intermarriage and you know, right. interaction that people have done. Right. But now, I'll get onto the other side of that tip of geography and technology, how some of the relationships became violent mm -hmm. and um, okay. unnatural. Like for instance, the violent relationship that evolved between uh, Ojibwe people and Dakota people. Mm -hmm. Now Dakota people, their language base is not Algonquin. Mm -hmm. And um, their, their cultural uh, orientation is, is different than ours. Not radically, but there, there's a difference. Now, People always had, uh, you know, different territories. There's always yeah, going to be some give strains. Me a, give me a base, though, for Dakota. Like okay, the Dakotas, well, you heard of Lakota, Dakota, mm -hmm. and commonly known as Sioux people. Okay. They use that, because that's what the French call the, the Dakotas. But there's Dakota, Lakota, Nakota. I'm not an expert at it, but I know sure, that sure, sure. those are all, those, they're a, a large, uh, linguistically and culturally, people who they have different territories and different uh, you know uh, ways that they dealt within their clans but they're basically mm -hmm. basically very connected so the Dakota people mm -hmm. you know we know of those people uh, mainly as the far west into the plains okay. but up until about the 16th century they also lived very far east as far like Ohio and around the Great Lakes it see it's as you're talking, and I'm thinking, you know, envisioning, you know, groups of people, and you know, um, having this interconnectedness and everything. And that one point is history is is rewritten horribly, yes. <laughs> where it's disjointed. In that agenda speaks that there were not these connections, that you know, was right. these separations. But logic kind of gets in there, and it doesn't even make sense for it not to be interconnected. Uh, because of the way well I mean we have to understand what the, yeah <laughs> it, it, what this really boils down to is like um, let's talk about earlier time our conception of time mm -hmm. because when we think of time we're only thinking it, it's it's values that people have with how they look at it. that's why a lot of times right. I'll divide when I speak about history I'll divide there's things that happened before time, mm -hmm. and then when time was imposed, the concept of time was imposed on time. Right, right. I, I feel that. Yes. I feel that. I feel that. When you are so connected with, you know, I can use the word the universe, the earth, well, the, the, natural, season, the elements. natural elements, yeah, you're on the time of nature, or how right. that, there's a cycle, it's more a cycle than there is some time, and then now you place well, time that as we know it is a Roman conception. Right, and that was placed on us to say, okay, now we have a time for this, or a time for that, as opposed to the cycling through. Right, and we have to understand that those times were created mm -hmm. with very different world views. Like, sure. for instance, in Native view, we always consider yeah. what is going to be the effect for the next seven generations. Yeah. Whereas modern view is, 
give me, give me, give me. Right now, money, time is money. But maybe think about the next generation because of their kids. <laughs> but, right. <laughs> but outside of that, <laughs> or how to separate them from what's been created, what's the been waste that's right, been created. Right, right. <laughs> but you know, get, getting back to what sure, I was saying sure. about the um, interactions, like interactions between native people have become strained. Yeah. As a result of some of this imposition of colonial. Uh, oh, I was, that's what I was going to say. Is that, is that from. Because I, I, keep, I keep hearing like the East, but then everything kind of goes West. Is right. that. Are you speaking of like the colonial influence and, and that movement? Well, or this something movement, different? even within, if you go back to what we're talking about Rome, the Roman imposed time. Yeah. If we were really to study the history of Rome, we, yes, it started in Rome present-day Italy, but Rome as we know it actually comes from what's known as uh, Turkey today mm -hmm. in uh, Istanbul or mm -hmm. Constantinople. Mm -hmm. That was the that was the, the main Roman. Mm -hmm. the, the empire in Rome, which it really started, just like in the United States, everything shifts west because it was okay. better that way. Right. Well, things were shifting east back in those days, mm -hmm. and when Roman Empire made a re, you know reemergence after they were sacked by you know the German mm -hmm. tribes, you know it it was the Eastern Empire that actually preserved a lot of that. And the same thing with the movement of, of west, yeah, you know, right. west. Mm -hmm. A lot of the traditions that have been saved moved west. west. Okay. And and what I was um, getting but to what is, is there a remnant in the east? There's still oh yeah, remnant definitely in the east, remnants in the east. But west. a lot of the, the knowledge, cultural knowledge, has been kept. Right. Uh, you know, people move west, and well, there's more to go into sure, it sure. for that. But one thing I, I wanted to point mm -hmm. is that uh, that I was getting to is within that that movement of west, that westward movement, interaction between native people started to break down, like getting back to the Dakotas right. and the Ojibwe, mm -hmm. two powerful groups of people. And they always had, you know, their skirmishes, but they sure. also had a lot of interaction, you know, mm -hmm. positive interaction. Mm -hmm. But as colonial influence came in, technology played a part again. Okay. Because the Ojibwe were closer to the uh, colonials, to mm -hmm. just physically closer. Right. So they had treaties access and alliances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, access to the fur trade was thing that really opened up mm -hmm. the interior of the country. It was the, it was the fur trade, and as a result, the Ojibwe were very much part of the fur trade, it's just as the five nations began. But from mm -hmm. this conversation, yeah. we just talk about the Ojibwe. And because they were able to trade with the Europeans, they were able to get firearms mm -hmm. and yeah, steel. Get and down. that gave them a technological edge mm -hmm. over the, um, the Dakota. And as a result, from the last, you know, from the 16th century on, there's there's a long history of like few blood feuds yeah. and battles that go on between the Lakota <laughs> and Dakota, <laughs> very much like the Pequots and the Mohicans yeah. See, yeah. in the historical time. Because it, as I said earlier, you know Uncas, the the founder of the Mohican Nation, was started out as a Pequot. Mm -hmm. So it's very confusing how all these things happen. But one thing that that ties it all together, if you can understand how colonial influence changed that picture. Yeah. You can get a much sure. better perspective on how history has evolved mm -hmm. to what we're at today. Like for instance, th this uh, conflict between uh, mm -hmm. Dakota and Lakota people can be seen today in, in Minneapolis, which mm -hmm. still has large groups of both, you know, really, large yeah. population of both right. peoples there. And there, uh, there still is, I mean, there's still a lot of intermarriage. And the funny sure. thing about it is, uh, a lot of these people who are Dakota and Dakota often tend to be very revolutionary right. and uh, radical people. Like for instance, uh, Leonard Paltier. Mm -hmm. He's uh, been in prison since the 70s. Mm -hmm. He's one of the longest held political prisons. In, I mean, he's still in prison. <laughs> I mean, it's, and he is an example of a, a Dakota Lakota mm -hmm. who just took that very radical uh, take on life. Yeah. And part of this goes back down to and how the history evolved mm -hmm. because like the American Indian movement, it was started in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. And there's, because of this movement of geography and technology, all these things, I mean, I don't have time to really go into now, but I'm just like, trying to just get a little for us to understand that our conception of time and history is completely skewed. 
yes, absolutely. Leave with you. Yeah. And the more we we get into it, and that's why history has always been you know, something I've been interested in because yeah. music and history are, are one and the same. Right. Because that's how his history is passed down. Like even in Africa, for instance, <laughs> the the griots, so-called griots, or jellies, mm -hmm. they're the ones who pass history down through music. Yeah. They did it music, and and I'm connected to that. I, I might have mentioned on the other show, my my yeah. fourth great grandfather was actually a jelly, yeah. who made that transition into the modern world. And that's what like the the family that I come from. We come from a long history of multicultural innovation. Mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. it, it, uh, they, it's funny because we have a, we definitely have a, a cultural view on things, and music is, is one of the ways that we express yeah, ourselves. Right. But I guess the best way you can say, in. yeah, it ties it in. But the best way you could explain the way you look at like the, the boundaries, they're not really held by traditional boundaries. Right. Like the other last night, I was watching. Uh, I never saw it when it came out. Guess who's coming to dinner? Okay. And it's a very interesting movie, but. You know, with Captain Hep Hartford's Captain Hepburn. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting the attitudes that people have. Yeah. And it wasn't just white people, it was black people yeah. too. Because yeah. I mean, we're all affected by racism. Yeah. And if we understood history, a lot of that would just fade away. This is what I'm sitting here and I'm like almost bursting at the seams because some of the things that you're saying, you know, they strike chords where you have this colonial influence, we all know that. And I guess I get kind of riled up when we have our people fighting each other because of that influence. Yes. So it's almost like, okay, well let's, you know, like tear this all, you know, uh, peel it all away to get to that truth, to get to that history and those beginnings and that. Well, uh, and we to get to those beginnings. That maybe Divide we and could comfort. could let go of some of that because as people we need to unite whether it's yes. Indian, whether it's black, we right. have the similar oh, yes. storyline of colonialism then, well, getting in their influence absolutely. and then now we fight each other. Why are yes. we fighting each other? Right. <laughs> right. Which gets back to, to history, even the way they teach history and you have black history, Native American history, right. Europe. It's all the same history. Right. Everybody was in the same room. <laughs> right. Right. And 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 interrelated even Right. Publicly, if they weren't interrelated, they were behind closed doors. Closed they were, doors, and, yes, and definitely. There's, yeah, there's all kinds of you know whether we like hey, it we or not. We kind of look alike, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. And, you know, it's really like in understanding the history. So, again, understanding history is understanding the time and the place that you come from. Right. Like uh, the uh, the oral history of uh, the Ojibwe people and uh, the colonial. Okay. The colonial history are very important in understanding how we look at things today. Like, for instance, Hartford, for instance. Mm -hmm. Hartford is um, is a great cultural uh, icon, technological and cultural, but it always has been because before European colonization, this was the center of the corn trade. Okay. Now, all these fields you yes. see around all the, those mm -hmm. are ancient that they became expanded when Europeans expect, right. but they've been there. They've been used for hundreds and hundreds of right. years. And this area we call Hartford, the Sukkah, which means Black Earth, has always been very rich yeah. and it's always been the center of the corn trade for this region. So our influence, even before European colonization, reached across New England and, mm -hmm. and down into, you know, what is now, you know, the mid-Atlantic states, right. but especially this region. Right. And like for instance, the Wampanoag people of what's now Massachusetts, they're very closely related to us. Always, we've always had good relationships with the Wampanoags, and um, yeah. you know, and relationships with the Narragansetts and the, the Shinnecock, the Montauks. All these, we are all families. Mm -hmm. We all speak the same language, but and there's always been, you know, there's always conflict. But conflict yeah. really, like for instance, what's happening in Hartford now. East, you know, north side, south side, south end, north end, you know, people, the who's mm -hmm. going to control. And it, I see it every day. And a big part of it is that, like, for instance, I, some of the kids I work with, they're talking about, oh, yeah, black people can't be Puerto Ricans. <laughs> and they're saying for this for the benefit of... You can't of, tell them that. <laughs> yeah, saying this for the benefit of a kid who is black and Puerto Rican. Right. And it was right. like, how's that making that kid right. feel? And, you know, it's like, 
<laughs> just say, do you know your you know history? Where you are, but <laughs> do you know? I mean, black people come from Puerto Rico. Is when you got white Puerto Ricans, black Puerto Ricans. I mean, it's it's crazy how we sub divide all the yeah, time. It's, <laughs> it's very, and it always has. Been. Yeah, and it, and you know, it's like we really have to look at how we we um, view. Even what's what's happened down in South Carolina, just mm -hmm. like the tragic events like right, that. Right. All of these, for us to think that this assassination is just the work of a deranged man, clearly it's, the man is deranged. Sure, sure. But the, yes, deranged as he was, he still had the wherewithal mm -hmm. to go into the most historic exactly black church in one. South Carolina mm -hmm. and take out a, a senator. Mm -hmm. yeah. Take a leadership, take out the leadership, mm -hmm. and the, it merely makes you think about you know this time of assassination. I, I'm a little old, and I remember back in the '60s yeah. when the asset, the televised assassinations were going on, and you know prior to you know uh, 1968, which was a catalyst, 68, 69, 70, that was a catalyst for everything, and there were so many assassinations that went on mm -hmm. at that time, and. Assassinations are, it's always a lone gunman. It's always a lone gunman. It, yeah. It's like this is, you can guarantee if someone political has been killed, mm -hmm. it's a lone gunman. Yeah. I mean, even going back to President Lincoln, mm -hmm. when Lincoln was assassinated, mm -hmm. we know the history of how the Civil War was going, mm -hmm. that the war was just going, continuing and continuing. The Confederates were losing, but they weren't going to give up. And the, the, the uh, prospect of having a projected guerrilla war yeah. was very real up right into 1865. And then when the treaty was signed, when you know the, the surrender was, was signed, it almost makes me think, why is it that President Lincoln was assassinated so, I mean immediately after right, the war? Right. And his vision of what the United States would become, would reconstruction, become. Yeah. was radically opposed to what the Confederates would have never signed a, a, mm -hmm. a surrender had they knew that they were going to have to actually adhere yeah. to those reconstruction, reconstruction, um, the, the reconstruction as was co uh, projected at that point. Mm -hmm. Now, just think about how when the Lincoln was taken out, just a coincidence. What a coincidence that a man, John Wilkes Booth, a lot of people don't know that John Brown, the, the abolitionist who was, was trying to start the Civil yeah. War shortly before it actually started, when he was executed, the only people who could go to his execution mm -hmm. were senators or people who were extremely important. Mm -hmm. John Wilkes Booth was front and center for that right. that execution, and no one, no one brings that point up. How it is that a Confederate, you know, sympathizer could be in in the theater, you know, with Lincoln? Mm -hmm. right. They're not watching him. The press is completely unguarded. Yeah. This man goes up there. Shoots him, jumps off the stage, breaks his leg, has enough to time to say six Semper Tyrannus, mm -hmm. and run off the stage when the audience was filled, filled with like hundreds of war veterans. Actually, had some of them had their sabers with them, and he just was able to limp away. Yeah. And it really makes you think about, you know, there are just so many coincidences and how these assassinations go on. That a lone gunman. That's that's ridiculous to even contemplate, you know. So I don't know how long I've talked here. I don't know how much time we have, I, I, but I don't want to. Yeah. I, I I'd like to just uh, for us to really look at time and how we look at time and just re-examine. Mm -hmm. And part of that is going to get back to in my music, my sure. art form. Absolutely. The metaphysical tourist. Mm -hmm. When I think of that, I'm not saying it to be flippant or anything, but yeah, I actually right, think of yeah. that, you know, as a metaphysical things are, they're supposed to be toured through. And we don't take the time to really just think about that. Yeah. So I think, I could probably come back and talk some more, but right now I like to talk a little bit and, and play a little bit okay. about what that means about, you know, sound and how sound can uh, be the catalyst for opening up things that are in a non-standard and non-linear way of understanding. Okay. Because history in indigenous mm -hmm. minds, 
it's not really been a linear right, thing. It's not linear. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Like now the Mayans like tell us we're at the peak of time. Yeah. You know, and this was foretold, you know, hundreds of years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting because now we're past the peak of time. It's all the world in then. <laughs> Well, has the world ended? I mean, <laughs> really, that, stop and think about that. The things that, I mean, even the beginning of the 20th century, things have faded so much, but there are still those things that are still with us. So time is not something that has a corner here and a corner there and it's right. a square. It doesn't move like that. Time is something that, you know, it gradually moves in a cyclical manner, which you'll still have some elements that are from the past that are still with us. I, I think that all of the, uh, the things that were placed on us and put on us even in modern times has uh, really taken us so far removed from our natural being, our natural state of mind, our natural physical being. And so we, we, we miss what's obvious in front of us, where people let's say, you know, to and fro and going to work and this and that, miss the weather, right? They rely on the weatherman to give them direction on what's going to happen today. How sure. about walking outside <laughs> right? and assessing the, the yes. trees and the grass and the air and the birds? And what are the birds doing? Exactly. What, we've lost that, and that's well, knowledge and it. intellect. It, it is knowledge and intellect, and for instance, the moon. We don't pay, like, the cycles of the moon. People will tell you, oh, well, it's not officially uh, summer until right. June 21st. <laughs> and it's like, you know, well, yeah, there, you can go by that if you want. Right. But the fact is, I watch when the robins come, I know spring. That's here. what I'm saying. You know, it changes. Even if and there's snow on the ground. It's not that specific date because no, it's not. life and earth is not tied to that one specific thing. It, right. it, it evolves. And like yes. the moon is further than it used to be. And right. this, so that affects the water, that affects the season. Yeah, <laughs> and we very much so. You know, we're just relying on this, this paper calendar that lets me know where. And you miss, I think. Well, you miss so much. Of it. Look how many people don't swim in the waters around here. Right. Or they tell, oh, it's too cold, I can't go swimming. Mm -hmm. Or they have to have an official time to go. This, right. this is all mind control. Really this is all is. about it control. Really because the imposition of time, and I say imposition of time, because mm -hmm. the imposition of time is, uh, is built around an economy. An economy right. that is tro controlled by the few right. and not by the people. Right. And that's a very important point to understand. Right. Because... I don't have to tell anybody, big money and uh, how things are run has very much to do with how we live our life, whether or not we're going to be happy, whether we have a good life or we have a miserable life, you're mm -hmm. stuck on, I gotta go to work, I gotta go to work, gotta go to work. you know, and even I'm understand totally what work is, what is work, Yeah. what is the purpose of work, what I is it that it. you're I'm doing right that, that really has an impact mm -hmm. on what's important, mm -hmm. okay, because yeah. Now, you, now you're evaluating the value system of what you have and Yes. And where that falls in uh, in line with that, as far as what, why am I toiling? For what purpose? Is right, and for whom? For whom I'm and toiling. all of that. And so you got to really evaluate. You do. You well, I think people are because even now the w things are changing. So like the internet has changed. We've seen the sure, last sure, twenty sure, years. Sure, it's sure. like changing. Well, the three D printer is going to do the same thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. So artists would know this. I mean, oh yeah. Factories are going to be displaced, just like yeah. everything has been decentralized from the internet. Everything's going to be set. Once we have three D printers, the accessible and yeah. by the masses. Oh right my right. God! There's going to be all kinds of little companies, startup companies that give you everything right. you want. You don't right. have to go. You don't, have to. you don't have to go. You know, to to foreign places yeah. to get what you want. All of these just resources that we plug have in, here. Plug it in. There you go. Yeah. So let's go back though to your so for your music. Yes. Bring that in. Okay, well the music is, is the, uh, the anchor that really allows me to see things because when you, things can be so confusing mm -hmm. right. in, in life as it happens, it's hard to decode it. Yes. But when you take time to do, to, to listen to music, mm -hmm. to whatever your art form is, because human beings by nature, as I said, we're technological, well that automatically says that you're an artist as well. Yes. Because technology mm -hmm. is art. Yes. It just depends on how we use it. Mm -hmm. You know, and the way that I look at technology and art is 
form follows function. Mm -hmm. You know, people say art for art. Say, well, yeah, that's all great. Form but the fact function. is, the art is following some kind of function, and it's got a function. Art just makes it all the more better. Because I mean, if you're not being beautiful, why should you do it? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, what are you doing here? You know, I've heard so many times people say, you know, that people really have a hard problem with looking at the non-material world. Yes. yes. People get into huge arguments. Yes. This is I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the material, the -material world. world. <laughs> right, but they have an issue with the non-material world. We can't. We're losing that connection. We're losing that ability. People are losing that. I mean, but there are pockets, though. I say that. But then you oh, there are pockets. You have pockets though. of people who are into the metaphysical and who are into. Well, there's pockets all around. I mean, sure, just the around. world. At, we're at a point now where people are just going to have. Okay, now. Because Which way are you going to go? Are you going to go in the aware. completely material sure. view of the world, or are you going to take the view that the material, what we see material, is just a shadow of right. the the spiritual world? Because right. the spiritual world is indestructible; right. it can never be destroyed. Yeah. And if you believe science, if you believe that you know we're made up of molecules, the same molecules that were here ten million years ago, the same ones that are here now, then you have to believe in spirit. I mean, how can you not? Whether, however you, you that know, whatever guide you want to go to. There is a term in science where there's a lot of scientists who are like, the more they do the facts, the more they do the, they, they, they turn and they're like, oh, it makes me even believe more in the spiritual because of yes. it, you know. Yes, so. the spiritual is very important. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, okay. yeah. you had some message? Yes, yeah, so we gotta hear you play. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm gonna uh, get out my saxophone and do a, a slight overture of the 20th century because okay. lately that's what I've been thinking so about. Because even thinking. though that were well, I'm a product of the 20th, I was born in the middle of the 20th century, so I can't help it. Here I am. Right. <laughs> but uh, the 21st century, even though we're in the 21st century, so many elements elements of the 20th century yeah. are still with us deeply. Yeah. And it really makes you think about what are those elements of the 20th century that are eternal? That even though they they might be shaped by the 20th century, but they go much further back. And finding those barometers, those anchors, those keys okay. helps you understand the time as it evolves now in the present. I love it. And it's not linear, and it's full. It's oh yeah, it can't be linear. I mean, absolutely. You can make it linear if that's how you want to look at it, but you will right. be in turn be linear. Right. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> now I'm going to play some music for one of my great influences who has made the transition. Ornett Coleman, because he's one of the great artists of the 20th century and 21st century. And Billy Strayhorn, another one of my favorites. So we're going to take a slight overture through the 20th century uh, from some of these artists.
Shoutouts to artistic expressions, and I support the arts. This is El Mixa Shan Razi. Hi, my name is Shandia. I'm a model. I'm giving a shout out to artistic expressions, and I support the arts. Hi, I'm Rita McGuire. I'm a painter. Shout out to artistic expressions, and I support the arts. What's up, y'all? This is Joe Young, writer, cartoonist, film producer. Shout out to artistic expression, and I support the arts. Peace.